tonight we have such a great uh, group of guys. Uh, Fred Simon is at, <laughs> Fred, you don't know this, but last week I announced that Paul Simon was coming. <laughs> and then I corrected myself. It's Paul's brother, Fred. Uh, but uh, uh, Fred Simon is a beautiful, beautiful guy, a beautiful, beautiful pianist, and wonderful uh, a musician and composer. And so we are thrilled to have him here. I've known Fred for many years. And he's here with just a, a, a wonderful, wonderful group. That's Dave Onderdonk on guitar. Uh, John Paul is going to be on bass, and Larry Beers on the drums. So rather than have them in our ima imagination, let's have them out here for real and uh, give a warm welcome. <laughs> Fred Simon Quartet. Thank you, Steve. Ooh. <laughs> it's too much power. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> my older brother, Paul, he, he, I, I never get any respect from him. <laughs> he never shows up. Um, thank you so much for being here. This is our first time at this phenomenally beautiful space. It's... Uh, it's great. The piano's great. The room is great. The vibe is great. The rugs are great. <laughs> they clean up really nice. <laughs> and uh, the audience is great. The sound is great. The people running the sound are great. No pressure. No pressure, right. <laughs> uh, so we're very happy to be here. We're going to start off with a tune of mine called 122512. And contrary to what some people have thought, it is not based on the melody of 25 or 6 to 4.
Thank you. I don't know the strength of my own voice. Oh, maybe I, I could just whisper like on radio. You know, get the real close mic. I'll get that. Uh, yeah. Um, the next tune we're going to do is called Laurel Canyon. Uh, named after the place, ostensibly, but really it's named after a time. Uh, a time when uh, Crosby, Sills, and Nash first sang in the backyard of Joni Mitchell's house in Laurel Canyon. I was there in my mind.
Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Late arrivals. All right, come on in. You could just, you know, get the first two tunes from the people next to you. <laughs> they, they can hum them to you real quickly. Um, I just want to say something about the incredible musicians playing with me today. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, they make me sound better than I actually sound. Um, my oldest, one of my oldest friends in the whole world on guitar, David Onderdonk. <laughs> Dave and I go way, way back to the uh, <clears throat> kind of mid-late 1900s, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and we've played in so many different situations together. Uh, some of Dave's music, some of my music, some other people's music, gigs on the road, gigs at home, everywhere, living rooms, everywhere. Um, on bass, I'm so happy to have John Paul. John is a terrific musician, great bass player. I met him, oh, also before the turn of the century, uh, probably 25 years ago, about playing uh, some trio gigs, uh, the two of us plus uh, my wife, Sarah Allen. Um, we also played with Fareed Hawk. Um, I, I know that both actually Dave and John played with uh, Fareed Hawk extensively. And John is also one of the core and founding members of the group Tributosaurus, with whom I play on occasion, when, I, when I'm lucky to do so, we just, we just did a series of gigs that were a lot of fun. The Police and Crosby, Sills, Nash and & Young. And yeah, oh man, so much fun. So, uh, but it's been a while since uh, John and I have played some of my music together and I'm so happy to have him here. Likewise, for my man Larry Beers on drums, Larry Beers. Larry Beers uh, and I also go back, back a ways, back, back, back. It's out of here. Um, Larry played on my album, Usually Always. Uh, yep, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, and we've uh, done a lot of playing and recording together, a lot of different types of situations, including the Tributosaurus Crosby, Seals, Nash & Young gig recently, <laughs> just recently, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I just love playing with, with Larry, and I will say this, it, this is the first time the four of us have played together, <laughs> ever. <laughs> kind of amazing. All right, we're going to play a tune now I wrote for the great composer, bassist, band leader, one of my all-time favorite musicians, Charlie Hayden. This is called Char uh, For Charlie.
here's another tune for a great bass player. I met uh, Kelly Roberti on Facebook. And Kelly Roberti, not quite as well known as Charlie Hayden, but he had a quite a career himself playing all kinds of different music and uh, even some records, double bass records with, uh, I mean double double bass, right? <laughs> double double bass with Ray <laughs> Brown. <laughs> uh, anyway, we met on Facebook and he lived in Montana and we talked about playing a gig together and one day he said, I'm, I'm coming through town with my wife, uh, hook up a gig. And we hooked up a gig actually at Steve Rashid's first incarnation of this intimate concert series at Whiskey Lounge um, about three years ago. Uh, and also played with my wife, Sarah Allen, on drums. Um, and that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. This is for him. This is called Big Sky. Thank you. 
you. We're going to do a tune now. Uh, this is uh, from a series, a whole song cycle I wrote um, uh, to the poetry of one of my favorite poets, uh, Robert Creeley. And uh, it's a whole set of Creeley songs. This is, uh, this is one of them. Um, they're actually in originally intended to be sung, of course, they have, they have words, but um, a little portion of uh, your admission tonight goes to ensure that I don't sing. Uh, we take just a little off the top just to make sure that. I, uh, but I will recite the poem. It's very short. Uh, and hopefully you will hear the words echoing in the melody of the music. It's called Hiccups. It all goes round, nothing lost, nothing found, a common ground. Outside is in, that's where it all begins and where it seems to end. An ample circle with center full of all that's in this world. Or that one. Or still another someone else had thought was fun. An echo. A genial emptiness. A finally commonplace. A bliss of this and this and this.
Thank you. Um, this is called Brother Mark, written for my brother Mark. Steve, I think we have time for two more. Cool, good. 
Um, all the music you've heard so far uh, was composed by me, but now we're going to play something uh, by uh, one of my favorite composers, Aaron Copeland. Um, this is my arrangement of uh, a theme of his from the soundtrack to the movie of uh, Thornton Wilder's Our Town. And if, sorry, <laughs> if you know the, if you know the music, you've never heard it like this before. <laughs>
Thank you. Aaron. <laughs> right on, Aaron. And that country music. Love it. We're going to play one more to close out this set. Then, as Steve said, we're going to have a uh, little intermission and then an um, interview and then more music. All the same notes in a completely different order. <laughs> so if you think you've heard everything, you know, you sort of have, but it'll be different. Uh, I want to give a shout out to both uh, Steve Rashid and Scott Steinman on sound. Yeah. And anybody else helping out up there, I don't know who else got their hands on the, the knobs. Uh, and of course, thanks to Steve and Bea for their wonderful space here. This is just, I'm loving it. I'll be back next week and the week after. I don't care who's on the program, I'll be here. So this is uh, our last tune of the set. Uh, this is written for my father. It's called Norbert's Blues.
David Onderdonk on the guitar, John Paul on the bass, Larry Beers on the drums. And this is Fred Simon right here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. Please do stick around. The bar is now open. As Fred said, we'll be back with a quick little interview and then more music. And uh, Jasmine just came up with a new drink. It's called It's Just Bourbon. You can guess what's in it. <laughs> Thanks. Fred Simon. And Dave Otternock. We lost the other two guys, Dave. but I love duets. <laughs> they're out on, they're in the bus. I think. <laughs> they're in the bus. <laughs> They're halfway to the next gig. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I've been so um, struck th during the first set. Um, I mean, we've known each other a lot of years, and this is the first time, uh, well, certainly I think that this group ought to get, go, that ought to go on the road. Uh, what a great group of Thank you. musicians. Thank you. Really, really wonderful. It, you know, if you book it, you can feel free <laughs> to right. take your 20%. Okay, okay uh, great. Um, the, uh, it's four highly talented musicians, but it really sounds like one very talented musician. Uh, you know, I, I mean, they really are, th you know, guys are all really thinking together. It's really wonderful. Uh, but I was, as I was listening, so much, so many of those pieces were your pieces, except for the Aaron Copeland piece. Right. Um, which, uh, I, I have to say, it kind of cracked me up, because you said, my favorite composer, Aaron Copeland, I heard this audible sound from the audience, I couldn't tell if it was, oh, or, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I could tell he actually really enjoyed it, as did I. Um, but uh, uh, I was thinking about the compositional process and getting inspired to write music and those sorts of things. And as, you know, I w y well, I, I was having a lot of thoughts at once. The other one was how timeless your music sounds and how great it sounds. And yet I know that you are coming from uh, an era where I mean, this doesn't sound like... Uh, like jazz that is being, um, uh, I mean, it's not, it's not hip hop related. It's not, you know, there, there, are lo there are a lot of movements in jazz and popular music that have happened in the last decade or two mm -hmm. that, are, that aren't so influenced, uh, that your music is not so influenced by. However, your music has a timeless quality and it sounds like it's right now. So it's not, it, 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 sounds, it sounds both uh, of, of an era and, and also very present. And I was thinking about how, how somebody gets inspired to write music and is the compositional process for you now different than it was 20, 30, 40 years ago? It's, it's different only in that I, the, the bar keeps on being raised. Mm. So I have to continue to strive to come up with the goods, you, do you know? Do you I mean, not that it becomes harder to come up with the goods, but just that, all right, I've done that, you know, I did that. <clears throat> now I've got to take it a step further, you know, get it a little better, make sure every note is exactly the note it should be. Mm -hmm. that, that really is the compositional process for me right there. Making sure that every note is the the exact note that it has to be. Yeah, yeah. That it can't be some other note. That's great. Because it wouldn't be as, it wouldn't be quite as good. Yeah, so it's yeah. sort of stripping away everything that isn't right. Yeah. Kind mm -hmm. of, yeah. yeah. Right. Do you, um, and do you, as you, as, as you move on and realize that you've been writing music for several decades, do you find yourself thinking, oh, I've, I've written that? I need mm. to write. I mean, do you, do you do you find yourself running into? I don't want to repeat myself. No, I you don't. I, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> Be, I, because I I'm going to repeat myself. Ah. But because humans do, I mean, you know, they accumulate uh, baggage for better or for worse. Um, if somebody is able to continually reinvent themselves throughout their career, uh, more power to them. But even if you talk about somebody like, for instance, Miles Davis. First thought, first yeah, thing exactly. Thought. Somebody who reinvented himself all the time. But if you listen to his own playing, 
It's the same. Yeah. You're, yeah it's yeah, the same yeah, in every right, context. Right, right. It's just what he, yeah, what he, what he yeah. put it around or what right, he put it around. Exactly, the context and, and the environment, right. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't worry about, uh, you know, I don't want to write something that's stale, but if it's something similar to something I've said before, okay, I'm saying it again and it's mm -hmm. years later and I'm going to say it's it's going to never going to be exactly the same, so I don't I don't worry too much about that. Now somebody could say, well, dude, you should, <laughs> <laughs> you should worry about that. <laughs> We're much bigger but things. I, I'm, about. I'm not. I'm, I'm, you know. So, uh, do you find yourself going to the same places for inspiration? In other words, do the same other composers or the, or the same other artworks or the same kind of life experiences seem to inform your work? Or has that shifted over time? No, I'm pretty consistent. I, I'm, I'm the music that informs me, m you know, that kind of makes up my musical DNA is the music that's always made up mm -hmm. my d mm -hmm. musical DNA. I, I encounter new versions of it and new composers and musicians all the time but they do tend to uh, be, y you know, they reinforce what is already there rather yeah. than take me into a completely new direction. You know, I, I have nothing against hip hop, for, for, for instance, but uh, the two things that inspire me the most about music are melody and harmony. Mm -hmm. A lot of chords sometimes um, ri rich harmonic sense and a rich melodic sense. So, uh, and hip hop is a little more rhythmic and textural, mm -hmm. w and nothing wrong with that at all, but that's not what would inform me. Um, I'm more informed by, uh, you know, maybe I'm th thinking about Copeland and Appalachian Spring, yeah. um, something like that mixed with, you know, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young and yeah. Joni Mitchell and the Beatles and Maurice Ravel and right. Eric Satie and Jimi Hendrix yeah. and, and <laughs> right, Miles right. Davis. And Miles Davis. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, one of the things uh, you have all enlist. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one of the things I, I've always, uh, uh, you are a man of, of some several, or more than several, many uh, funny phrases. And one of the things that you've said that I've, that I've stolen, and I've used many times, is you refer to yourself as a musical omnivore. Yes. And yeah. I, I love that concept. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so, and it, it, it certainly comes through in your playing and your writing, but could you, I mean, I think, I, I think you just went I think I list. just did. Yeah, yeah you just sort right. of went through the list. Right. But that yeah. was sort of where I was headed next was yeah. was your your um, and I think truth. I mean, I, I certainly feel that way about myself. Music. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but it certainly isn't one thing that jumps out at me as as like the thing that I mean. I know the the source of when I decided I wanted a life in music. It came from kind of a specific place musically, but but then that immediately broadened, and it was just sort of like, oh wow, cool sounds everywhere. Um, do you, is that kind of how you? Oh, you absolutely. It's the it's the human experience. It's a wide world of humans, and therefore it's a wide world of human musical expression. So uh, I'm interested in all of it. Uh -huh. uh, gravitate towards some more than others, but I you know I don't I don't like d it, categorization is is good. It's handy for uh, quick. Uh, analytical discussion of, you know, differenti differentiating between different types of music, you know, it's useful. But what I really like is to think of it, it's all, it's one world, we're all humans, it's all one song. Yeah, It's just right, one right. song. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. Isn't that right? That's excellent. Well, and speaking of that, I, I, it, it, we're all humans. Uh, what a wonderful thing to have a, 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 a group of, of Dear friends, all together. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I was shocked to find out it was the first time that the four of you had played together in this. I mean, as as a, as a quartet. How great! I'm kind of shocked too. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way. Um, <laughs> and I know Fred spoke to uh, to to have how much fun it was to, to have you guys on. But any of you guys have anything to add to that about about just this this group? Anybody? I feel like we're. 
feels kind of like family because there's a yeah. lot of history between us yeah. and different combinations. I've yeah. It really makes me have a warm, fuzzy feeling when I think <laughs> back, you know, <laughs> and see us now. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that was Larry, by the way. Here's John. Well, and for me, uh, the best part of it is that it's Fred's music that yeah. brought us together. Yeah. And so playing it, you know, we're kind of expressing that. Hopefully that connects with the audience too, yeah. in that you know our mutual admiration for each other and our friendship. You know, it, it's kind of cool how you can bring that together musically. Um, everybody here really is focused in on listening to each other, uh, and it's conversational, uh, just like if we're hanging out in the green room, right? But <laughs> at, at, but it's harder on, yeah. the, on the stage. <laughs> Right. Well, like I said, you know, it, 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 especially with jazz, it becomes a conversation, yeah, and and uh, what a fun way to have a conversation without using any words. I know, David, you and and Fred, you go back to like high school together, don't you? Junior you're high school. Junior high school. Yeah, in, in Evanston. Yeah. In Evanston. Mm -hmm. Fred and I <laughs> go pretty far back. Uh, Sixty-seven. Yeah. It's yeah. like that's the summer of love, right? I mean. Totally, I mean, totally. On, you know. So, no, I, we somehow had some mutual friends that uh, got us hooked up, and I don't know. And we we've, we've yeah. played ever since, and and we've we've listened to a lot of the same things. I think I've definitely stolen things from Fred. Uh, oh, vice versa. Years. Yeah. Back at you. But Absolutely. it's just like this. I mean, talking about this environment and this group of guys, there's like a, a, a really high level of trust between us and then I, this this context playing Fred's music is like I relate to it so heavily and it, it uh, I love it and when I try when I write I try to write things that I love and when you play it you're conveying that that love to everyone else so exactly hopefully so that's yeah that's what I say <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right and, and that's what a great way to end. I, ex um, I second that emotion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love that song. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you, gentlemen, for what a, what a fun evening. So Fred Simon, course, up, that's Fred Simon on the piano, David Onderdonk on the guitar, John Paul on the bass, and Larry Beers on the drums. And I'm getting out of the way. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. I always enjoy talking to you. Um, and thanks again for having us here. This is great. We're going to start the second set pretty much the same way we started the first set, except just a little different. Uh, this is called I Know You Know.
And now for some Bob Dylan. <laughs> I, uh, well, Dave, Dave is uh, changing instruments here. I love Bob Dylan, but this, to me, might be his, it's certainly one of his most beautiful songs, uh, for sure. And I, I just love playing it. I think you'll recognize it.
Yeah, man, I can, you know, it's weird. I can picture uh, the old kitchen of my parents' apartment before we moved to the house. And we moved to the house when I was a sophomore in college, but okay, high school, right, exactly, <laughs> of course. Uh, high school. And... Um, I remember hearing that for the first time, I think, on Triad Radio. <laughs> yeah, Triad Radio. That, that really, you know, fed my, uh, my musical uh, hunger, for sure, that, that radio station. Anyway, we're going to continue with a tune of mine here called River of Sight. It takes its title from a line in a Neil Young song, uh, don't let it bring you down. Um, come on down to the river of sight and you will really understand.
Thank you. We're going to uh, play another piece I did not write. I wish I had written this. <laughs> I'd be famous. <laughs> uh, you will recognize it, no doubt, but I don't think you, unless you've heard us play it, <clears throat> you have not heard it played like this.
here's another song I wrote for a bass player. This is for somebody well known and loved in the music community in Chicago, Rob Amster. This is called Remember to Remember.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't let it bring you down. Remember, it's only castles burning. Just find someone who's turning, and you will come around. We're going to close out with one more tune. I want to thank you again. Thanks to Steve Rashid and Bea Rashid and Scott Steinman and Jasmine, I think, and everybody else who works here. Um, and I want to give a special thanks to my fellow compatriot musicians, Dave Onderdonk on the guitar. Yeah. John Paul on the bass. John Paul. Larry Beers on the drums. Larry Beers. And thanks to you all for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. Makes me feel very uh, gratified to have you here listening to the music, and we hope to see you again very soon. This is called Home from my open book album. Feel free to sing along.
David Red. Onudonk, John Paul, Larry Beers. My name is Fred Simon. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. The Fred Simon Quartet. David Onudonk, John Paul, Larry Beers, Fred Simon. <laughs>